Hey all, welcome to Share Trick. This is your host Raj. A big welcome to the thousand new subscribers who joined us in the last three days. You might have missed out our first hundred HIV videos, so please watch till the end of this video as I have a special message for you. Today I will share with you the origins of HIV retroviruses and their relation to human DNA, various strains of HIV, effective vaccines and types of vaccines, and what will eventually happen to HIV. If you are watching my video for the first time, please note that the ShareTrek HIV channel on YouTube provides two HIV videos every week where we discuss clinical trial results or HIV related information. The videos starting 24th of January 2024 are now made with subtitles in French, Korean, Filipino, Spanish and other languages. If you are already a subscriber, please consider becoming a member to help keep this channel going. My other channel is ShareTrek and it covers investment in genomic companies that make gene therapies and genomic sequencers. So that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. HIV is believed to have originated from simian immunodeficiency viruses or SIVs and it is in non-human primates in Central and Western Africa transmitted to humans through hunting and consumption of these animals. SIV crossed over to humans resulting in two main types of HIV, HIV-1 which is more widespread globally and HIV-2 which is more prevalent in West Africa. The first recognized case of AIDS was reported in the United States in the early 1980s, marking the beginning of the global epidemic. HIV spread globally due to factors like globalization, migration and insufficient awareness. While HIV is harmful to its host, viruses including HIV do not operate with the intention of benefiting or harming hosts. Their primary goal is replication. The severe consequences for the hosts are likely unintended side effects of the virus's life cycle. Many retroviruses, including some that have incorporated into our DNA, constitute approximately 8.5% of the human DNA. Some of these retroviruses are beneficial, while others are benign. For example, here are a bunch of retroviruses in our DNA and their functions. You can pause the screen to read the details. I'll make a video on this at a later date, but for now, coming back to HIV. Mutation is a fundamental aspect of viral evolution. Not all mutations are successful. Only those that confer a selective advantage propagate within the population. Distinct, well-conserved areas on the viral genome are vital for successful replication and transmission. HIV has a high mutation rate, generating diverse viral replicants known as quasi-species. Short generational time and large population sizes allow rapid accumulation of mutations facilitating quick evolution for HIV. Potential outcomes for HIV is an, uh, in an evolutionary context involve adaptations to increase transmission without causing as much harm to the host. Adaptation can occur through mutation or external interference. Certain regions of HIV remain relatively conserved over time and these conserved regions are uh, crucial in vaccine development. These are GAG protein, Paul enzyme, and ENV glycoprotein. Key structural uh, protein with uh, relatively conserved regions crucial in the assembly and release of new viral particles. Responsible for critical function in the viral life cycle, some regions exhibit conservation. While variable conserved regions within the protein are potential targets for vaccine development, here are the types of intervention that are being attempted as you can see on the screen. There are four types of vaccine development strategy at play. These are conserved epitope uh, vaccines, mosaic vaccines, neutralizing antibodies and T-cell responses. If you look at this table, you can see that there are no examples available for any approved vaccine so far across all the strategies. However, there are a lot of promising clinical trials taking place. Unfortunately, the mosaic vaccines did not provide sufficient protection, but the other three strategies are showing promising results. 
We have covered EOD-GT860MER a few times in this channel. We also covered the mosaic vaccine and the ones with broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNABs. I'll cover the T-cell response vaccine soon. Here is another table that shows you various strains of HIV and treatments that work on them. You can pause the screen to read all the details. I'll provide you the highlights here. We have a total of six distinct strains of HIV. Of these, HIV-1, group M, accounts for 90% of cases with global presence, whereas HIV-2 comes second with less than 10%, mostly concentrated in West Africa. Most initiatives are aimed at HIV-1, and most therapies work on both strains, but some class of ART may not work on HIV-2, and those are NNRTI and protease inhibitors. This brings out the importance of adhering to ART schedules for patients. These timely and consistent ART, ART intake will help keep safe, whereas not being consistent with ART can potentially help create a strain that resists the ART. Right now, I am focusing on a few key initiatives globally with the hope that one or more of them may succeed by 2027. Before you write 2027 in stone and hold me to it, please remember that any of the clinical trials can throw up an unexpected surprise. So please do not hold me to it. However, based on everything I have seen so far, 2027 seems likely a date, early date for a HIV functional cure. Functional cure means that you may still have virus in your body, but the therapy will be once and done and will provide lifelong control of the viral loads to keep it ultra low. The other option is a sterilizing cure where every copy of HIV in your body is eradicated. I think EBT 101 in combination with a latent HIV activator in a shock and kill method has the potential to be a sterilizing cure. In our earlier videos, I had spoken about two combination experiments underway with EBT-101 that attempt to do exactly this. Since we are now the new global HIV channel and almost a thousand new subscribers have joined us in the last three days, I'm planning to cover all the therapies and clinical trials again with updates since the last release. All videos will now have subtitles in multiple languages and the aim is still to publish two English videos with subtitles and their equivalent to Hindi videos every week. Well, I hope this gives you a comprehensive understanding of HIV. With that, my friends, I would like to bring this video to an end. And a very, very big thanks to the thousand uh, new subscribers who joined us today. If any of you like what you have seen here, please consider becoming a member of the channel and helping us out and help us keep this going. Well, before I leave, I want to just give a gentle reminder to our long-term viewers who have always been seeing English HIV videos in this channel that this is the last English HIV video that I'm putting on this channel. Uh, starting from uh, 1st of February onwards, all future HIV videos will come in our HIV Global channel, uh, which is uh, ShareTrek HIV on YouTube. So I have put a helpful link in the description. So if you go there and click on that link, it will allow you to subscribe directly in the new channel and then you immediately press the notify button so that you don't miss a single video. And I'll look forward to see you there. Please join us at the HIV Global channel. And this is a new chapter for the channel and I'm hope, I have a lot of big hopes for this channel. And I hope we reach to every corner of the world in different languages so that everyone who wants to know anything about HIV and its therapies gets an extra resource. Thanks and have a great day. See you soon. Bye for now.